Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. You guys, okay. In true Layla Sophia fashion, I have this like grander idea for a video because I've been seeing so many, which I think happened last year too, so many of these video I don't think it's a trend, but so many creators that, you know, for the last year or so have been selling everything, have been getting rid of their entire collections, have been feeling like they over collected. And instead of doing one like 40 minute long video, I had a few ideas. And so I'm gonna break break this up, do a kind of couple offshoot videos, which I'm already over explaining, of course, again, in true me form. But one of my biggest things that I've been thinking of is trends. Do trends kill bags? Do trends make it so that bags are a little bit overdone so that we no longer want to collect them? Anyways, we're gonna get all into those. And I'm even gonna give you the top picks of bags that were trendy that I did not buy into, that I'm happy I didn't buy into, ones that maybe I thought I missed out on and also ones that I did buy into that I think went quite well. First and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put up videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Okay, so again, this isn't gonna exactly be about, you know, why is everyone, or not everyone, but why do people get the, oh my gosh, I've been over collecting, I need to sell everything, start totally over. This is gonna be kind of a little offshoot because I've been thinking so much about how, you know, we already know me, we know what I stand for, we know I love pre-loved, we know I love making things more cyclical, we know I love my carrying its situation, which has now become a bit of a buzz phrase. But hopefully it's my authentic collecting voice and not just a trend in itself, haha. <laughs> okay, a little inception moment here. So I thought I'd start off this little series that we're maybe gonna do, a discussion series, if you will, with the pieces that in future, this could be years old or very, very recently, the bags that we know are that girl, the bags that we know are the it bags, the bags that we know have made it to the stardom place and kind of it bag history, the ones that I did not collect that I'm very glad that I didn't collect. I figure that's a good place to start and why not start with the most recent, okay? And this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a two, you know, double-edged sword because I'm like, am I glad I haven't gotten this yet? I don't know what I have been, I felt like it was, you know, oversaturated if I did get it, but the elephant in the room, the row, Margot, okay? Let's just start off with a bang, okay? As I always say. We're no waiting here, let's start out with a bang. I have many mixed emotions about the row Margot and this little stardom phase. It was so nice, first of all, a little shout out. Vivian, I love your video so much. Vivian Connolly made, give, gave a little shout out to me in one of her videos and first of all, I was, I was like completely honored and a little starstruck and so grateful because I'm a little baby creator here on this platform. The way she described my collection, I was like, accurate. I'm so appreciative. And, and even she mentioned how many bags from the row I have. That's undeniable. I know I'm a collector. Myself and my mother have been collecting for so long, if you guys are new. And even in that, even in the fact that I've done so many, you know, overviews of my collection from the row, I never felt the pull at my heartstrings to get a Margot right now because I've gone over this so many times. It is completely inappropriate for my lifestyle, completely inappropriate for my lifestyle. I was just talking to one of you guys who I love so much. When I was in high school, you know, I grew up in like in more of a town right outside of the city. And so I drove everywhere, okay? I had activities up the wazoo as most high schoolers do. I loved me a big bag. I loved me a shoulder bag. I had a completely different taste level, I guess that, but not even taste, just like necessity level back then. And I know that I'm not back there yet. If I, you know, had a car, if I was driving everywhere, if I was a mom, if I had a family, you know, none of those things apply to me at this very moment in time. I would have gotten a Margot years ago, okay? My mom has the Margot inside out, which I talk about all the time, so I'll quickly just touch on it. It's amazing, she uses it as her weekend travel bag. It's incredible. Again, I pretty much stay put. I love my little neighborhood in New York City, okay? It's me and my dog, and I mainly do errands. And so had I gotten a Margot just because 
literally everybody and their mother has a Margo. I would, that would have been so inauthentic to me. And I think I would have regretted it. I think I would have had a moment of being like, oh my God, did I really just get this bag? Because every cool person who looks beautiful on Instagram, on Pinterest now has a Margo. I think so. I think that there would have been a little bit of me that just felt like it was an inauthentic move to jump on because I'm, you know, because they're a lot more scarce because I don't know what the price situation is going to be like in the future. I don't know if they're gonna get pulled from stock. I don't know, there's a lot of weird kind of rumors going on. I know the row, I, I you know, I, I know that everything in general is cyclical, but it's such an interesting thing. The row is kind of, which I'm making this much too long of a point. Let's get on with it. My last little point being that here's, the row is kind of the exception because a lot of trend bags are literally fueled by the designers, by the house, gifting these pieces to influencers, making, you know, drumming up so much of that noise, so much of that excitement so that a piece can be the it bag. And the row, Margo, I'm gonna have to, you guys let me know down in the comments below. This is where I need y'all's help. The row, Margo is one of the only authentic, really just organically led trend bags because it's been out for a long time and I know the row does not gift notoriously. They're not out here saying, oh, you know, so-and-so, where are our bags? We need more PR. They are so organic that I think there's something magical about that. And I guess my only, you know, the other side of the sword is, am I gonna be sad that I didn't get my foot in the door and get a Margot, even if it wasn't the time for me to be wearing it yet? Am I gonna be sad that I didn't get one? I've always said that the magic was in the 17 size. That's been the size that I love specifically. The 15 is also amazing. The 15 specifically the one with the belt and the handles inside the bag or the 17, I've always said. I've always said are amazing. That's kind of where I'm a little bit iffy, but generally speaking, I think that I'm glad that I've stayed true to myself and collected the bags from the row that I really like could not stop thinking about that most people don't even know about. A bag that I would consider, however, that is a trending cool bag. And I know my Abby bag from the row definitely is having kind of a little bit of a trend moment, but just because it sold out doesn't necessarily mean that it's trendy. You never have any idea of how many units people made. And so, yes, I've totally, you know, bought into some of the cooler pieces from the row, but for the most part, I'd say they're cool. <laughs> I get the ones that are a little quirkier, a little bit weirder. If you guys know my collection, you know, my whole collection is down in my channel, you know, shameless plug. But the Idaho, I've been having such a little fixation with, specifically, we, can we all say it together, in the brown smooth leather. That's my vibe. I've been seeing so many people and just cool, you know, there's just so many cool people on the internet. You know what I mean? When you, this is why I'm doing this video because when I see these really cool people with really dope outfits putting together their own little, you know, outfit scheme, especially as we're going into spring with the Idaho, I'm like, oh, did I need this bag? Should I have jumped on it before it sold out everywhere? That is, you know, that I'm gonna throw that in there as one that she's trendy, but I wouldn't mind having that. One from Bottega Veneta that I am so happy that I did not buy into. However, I still don't ever worry, guys. I love it on other people, but the Bottega Veneta Jody, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, because we all know I did. I waited it out, but I totally bought in clearly as we know, you know, I have an entire shelf, an entire collection of Daniel Lee era pouch style bags. That was a trendy moment, okay? And I bought into it about two years after, or a year-ish after it became super trendy because I'm, you know, I, I did my little pre-love search. I went the affordable route and got ones for incredible deals. And there's some of my favorite bags in my entire collection. Let's get on with the point. The Jody, I really loved it, but the pouch something in me said, oh my God, you need this. The Jody, I didn't start wanting until I saw everybody in it. And that's how I know, okay, red flag, I say to myself, this is a red flag. Do we really, really want this? Or do we want to, do we want it because other people have it and they look really cool wearing it? I'm so happy because the small boutique of Annette Jody, I'm sure I would have figured out a cool way to wear it in my outfits, but she's a small gal and it's a little bit hard to get into. I've heard people say, I still always lust over Cassie Thorpe's. And I think actually Romina Rose May has one too, the Calorophyll Jody bag. Oh my God, I love so much. And Just Be Lou also just got the mini Jody. I think the mini Jody, right? Not the candy Jody, the, the regular size mini Jody. <laughs> Not said very well with the chain strap. I also loved that one. However, I know myself 
And if I was bopping around New York with my dog in one hand, you know, my dog's leash in one hand, my coffee in another, trying to get in and out of a small, cute little bag that doesn't really have the easiest opening, I would have been so frustrated. And honestly, I probably would have sold that bag. Even in the small, medium, and larger sizes, I loved so much. I absolutely wanted one. We now have an issue with my sloped shoulders. I think I would have gotten it and been like, this literally doesn't work. I can't wear it in the winter. I can only wear it with a tank top because it will hopefully kind of stick to myself and stay in place. Long story short, I'm so happy that I didn't get a Jody one day maybe if the price is right, if I can get one for like under $1,000 as the pouch bags have kind of been in that range right now, I would totally not mind, you know, just scooping one up, but it wasn't for me. And I'm also so happy because I don't think this is for me either, but I actually, I think I prefer the hot bag style in like a cool contemporary, very edgy way to the larger Jodies. I loved the larger Jody until I saw the hop and I said, the, the hop might be that girl. The hop is so cool. It's just chic. It's just, I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sound really, really corny right now. There was one initial picture with Kylie Jenner wearing it. And I said, you're the coolest person ever. That is the coolest bag. It's really, really chic. The Dior saddle bag was a hard one for me because I wanted that bag for a solid year, maybe year and a half. I'm gonna be honest, okay? Here's another example of something. I would have loved that bag for about five minutes and then I would have realized, oh, I'm plus size, I'm larger. You know, it's changing a little bit. We're trying, I'm trying to be here in the change, but I wouldn't have looked like all the inspo pick, you know, people that I saw with it just effortlessly, even just people in real life that I see in New York carrying that bag, they have it on their shoulder, you know, in New York, it is a little hard to just always have a crook of the arm bag. I would have been so frustrated at that bag. And there was one, I tried, I tried for my, I think maybe my 28th or 29th birthday, I found a vintage Stingray one on eBay and something happened. I don't know if it sold again or something, the sale got canceled. And I was like, I was gutted for months. I'm not going to lie to you. And then I was just like, no, I just wanted that one. I really like the double saddle bags. Would I, if for $500 would I get an ostrich brown double saddle vintage Dior? Maybe, but maybe also the handbag gods are saving me. Maybe there's something in it that wouldn't have been practical. I don't know, something like that. Looking back, I'm so happy that I didn't get the re-edition really cool saddle bags because I think a lot of people have some interesting complaints about it. It doesn't fit as much as it seems like it's going to fit. And after looking back years later, that was the bag that everybody was unboxing at the same time. And we know me, I think I would have gotten frustrated at that and I would have wanted to trade it out for something a little bit more niche. These ones will go a little bit quicker, I promise. Okay, the Alila Tekel, it's gonna be controversial. I know, I know. The Alila Tekel was never for me. It just was not my vibe. However, when everybody started unboxing it, you know, that's definitely a piece that maybe, you know, got gifted to, to some cool people, rightfully so, as they deserve. I think, in my opinion, they work really hard. I think it looked so chic and I just was like, no, I've, I've tried, I've tried to harken back to my edgier, cooler, vibier days. That is so reminiscent of that and on me, something can look edgy real quick. I put on one edgy item, I'm edgy, and it's awkward. It's just not for me. And then I had a moment because I saw the suede brown one and I said, oh my gosh. I realized to myself, I didn't even like the shape to begin with. Why would I lie to myself? Because everybody, oh, my entire Instagram feed for at least two weeks, still kind of trickling in, was just the Alila Tekel. You know what I mean? That's where I'm so happy that I've kind of gotten over it. Like maybe I just really like suede bags right now and I need to find some more suede bags. You know, my little Savette Symmetry pochette back there in suede. Maybe I just wanted a suede bag. That I'm so happy that I didn't like completely cave when I first saw the brown suede because she is cute, but you know, I wanna love something wholeheartedly, not just because of the color. Ooh, and a controversial one that's actually a really good ending <laughs> spot because the Loewe puzzle bag. What happened last? There was like the moment of all moments where I don't know who drove this on the Loewe side or on the influencer side or on the creator side. I don't know what happened, but like 
there were all these rumors, ha and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but there were all these things happening that like, the original style of the puzzle bag is being completely discontinued, so buy it now. Everybody was unboxing a puzzle bag, and it made me say to myself, I need to go get one. What is going on? I thought there was something stopping me. Even I, even I, I had found some really good deal ones, to be honest with you, on the preload market. There was something stopping me. Again, maybe I've just gone away. It's not a camera bag style, but like, kind, actually, yeah, I'd categorize that as a camera bag style. You guys help me, you know, it's not exactly because there is technically a top handle, but it gives camera bag vibes. I think I probably ominously would have worn it a lot and maybe would have liked it, but I always loved the flamenco bag. I still love that bag. I'd seamlessly be able to add her into my collection. But since at like when there was something driving, oh my goodness, everybody needs a puzzle bag. The edge version, or is it the edge version? I don't know. The one with the with the one with space in between the little uh, pockets of leather. I'm really not doing well in describing today. The one with space in between the leather, when that was like rumored to be being discontinued. I don't know if it's because it, like there was such a frenzy that Loewe actually, I have no idea what happened, but Loewe could have said, oh my God, people love this bag. Let's not discontinue it. I don't know. I have no idea. This is all alleged, but it confused me because I was like, why is everybody unboxing one? And I'm so happy looking back that I didn't get one. I think there's something about, I've just gone so minimal, which you guys are probably tired of, but I've just gone so, like, look behind me. Clean, minimal, chic, easy silhouette, I think has become my vibe. And even though I could have gotten an all, you know, a tonal puzzle bag, I still think it just wouldn't have been the vibe for me. And I still love the flamenco bag. So I know that if one's trumping the other, don't just buy it just to buy it or buy it because somebody said, you know, somebody said it's never gonna exist again. Thank God for the pre-loved market. We always have that to fall back on. And you guys, this has been a little bit of a chaotic, <laughs> disjointed first part to my little series on trend bags versus what we really, really want to be having in our collections when trends work, when trends don't work. And these are the pieces I'm so happy I did not buy into and did not purchase yet, at least for their retail prices, at least during the heyday, you know, craze for them. I'm so curious to hear if you guys have any regrets. I hope not, but if you guys have any regrets or any pieces like me that you're so happy you didn't buy into, please let me know down below. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.